All right, so we have our volume source here. Boom. Ready to go. We've got our collision volumes and all that jazz. So now we just got to make the actual dot network to house everything. So we'll call this smoke sim. Get this light out of the way. Um, we know we can see here that frame four, it looks about right. That's when everything gets going. So we'll just go ahead and set this to four now. We don't need to, to waste any time with this extra stuff. You might want to, you might want to have the air be disturbed by this coming down. Um, in our case, I don't think we're going to notice the difference. I'm just going to start it on four. Um, I'm also not going to use a shelf here because the shelf just adds so many extra things that we're not going to use and kind of settings I'm going to have to change back anyway. So I'm just going to make it from scratch here. So we'll make our smoke object and we'll make our power solver. There we go. We'll make our source volume and the source volume. This one's going to bring in our density and velocity. We're actually going to end up making another one to bring in the collision. But first things first, remember we have their density and the three velocity fields here. It's already set to source smoke, which is fine. So we just point it to that and then we're good. Um, we're not going to do temperature. We'll cover that and all the pyro stuff coming up. Uh, and velocity will add it in. Um, it's always a good idea to mask the velocity being added in by the density. Um, especially because we had all of that crazy curl noise. We don't want to add all of that extra noise in. We want it to, this is going to multiply the velocity vector by the density. So long story short, where there is no density, it's not going to add any velocity. Um, it's already called density here in Vel, so we don't have to change anything here. Um, and let's see what we get. Well, actually it's way too small. So we're going to need to pull this guy out to the right. This guy out to the left. This is going to define the maximum um, that the box, that the, the domain can get. We're going to use our resize dynamic that you'll recall from lesson two. That way it won't actually always be this size but uh, it can get up to this size anyway. There's lots of different ways to do this. You could have it not have a maximum. Um, we could have it infinitely get larger and larger. Insulation static is what we want here. And let's also just say, how about 150? I, I tend to start at 150. I feel like that's a good, good starting point. Boosh. So there it goes. Not bad. Um, we can see some of the issues that we would expect, I can see off the bat. Uh, one thing actually is, that even though we started our sim on frame 4, I don't see anything here. That's actually because this is not, uh, rather, it's not solving the creation frame. Now it is. So, here we go. Now I'll solve some of our problems. And we can still see, though, that the sim is running up against the side of this box. Um, the sim, it's always resizing to get away from the smoke, but the distance that it basically get, pushes the boundaries away is defined by the padding here. So we want to keep this as low as possible so that we're not simming stuff we don't need, uh, but it needs to be high enough to encapsulate it. So now you can see by pushing it up, we still have the gap there, which is what we want. So great. So now we've got that. Um, it's you know getting bigger and bigger, but you'll see it'll stop right around now. It's not moving any farther along these axes. Great. So let's, um, I want to see though, I want to see my, uh, the actual rigid stuff here in context. Boosh. Cool. So right now we're getting these huge, uh, mushroom lobes, these guys, these are classic CG look and we definitely don't want that. One way that we're going to get rid of it is you typically, when you're adding velocity, um, bring this down a lot. It's good. It's basically adding the full velocity, you know, every single substep or every single frame anyway. And that's, those are, are becoming additive. So it's actually going faster and faster and faster. Point one will make more sense here, especially considering that we don't want the smoke. The smoke is being left behind for the most part by the, by the debris. It's not probably not going to go the actual full speed. Smoke would not go as fast as the thing that's generating it because of wind resistance. And speaking of which, let's get a, a drag in here. I'm just going to use uh, one of our magic numbers that we came up with. 
in our second lesson. I just find that 0 0.04 at this scale works pretty well. That we want it to be, you know, propelled out into the world, but we want it to also slow down fairly quickly from uh, from the air. Now, a lot of the movement, though, so we, we have movement because of our velocity here. And in, in fact, just to demonstrate, if we don't, there really should nothing should happen here. As you can see, it's not moving at all. It is disappearing because I left this on. Get out of here. So there we go. It looks like it's moving only because it's it's stamping or it's copying our densities on every frame, and that was moving because of our particles. But it's not actually moving in the sim here, as you can see. We are getting those really cool streaks though, which are which is why we did those particles earlier. Pretty cool. So let's bring back the velocity. We're just adding a little bit. Um, let's also, while we're here, let's grab that ground plane because that'll be. Uh, we're going to want to match that look, especially because the the smoke, especially when you're dealing with smoke uh, that's being generated from, let's say, rock or masonry or, or things that were solid objects as opposed to steam, um, those are still dense things, and they are actually still going to be affected by gravity. So we're going to want to add some gravity in as well. Um, so collide, mutual, cool. So now... Um, We've got the ground plane in there. So let's add that gravity that I just talked about. We'll keep it at the full 9.8 meters squared per second. And one of the nice things you'll get with gravity in a ground plane is you'll get this roiling, traveling across the floor effect. Isn't that cool? I like that. Um, it's still very smooth and we still have lobes and things, but you can already see that, that effect where the smoke is traveling with the velocity of it being sent out by the pieces and then it's also falling at the same rate as the pieces so it's really helping to integrate into that. If we want it to be suspended more of course we could just change the amount of gravity that there is. I'm going to go ahead and save this because this is already coming along pretty good. Um, now let's actually add that collision in though. Oh there's my output. Get back here. The output is just like a convenient thing to say that this is the result of the sim. You can also cache from here, although I never do. Anyway, so we've got source volume, density, and velocity, and then we're going to make another one right next to it. We'll have to actually combine these together. Now this merge is not going to actually do a collision relationship. As you can see, it's not even available to us, as opposed to this one down here, which knows that this is the kind of thing that can be collided. These are not collisions. These are just two different sources that it's going to have to do. This one's going to add into our collision fields. So we can go right to collision to again make some defaults, set them up. Um, we're going to want to point to our collision VDBs here. And remember, the, one, of the, one of the gotchas is because the sign distance fields for VDBs are the opposite, we need to change that here. The velocity is the same because velocity is velocity, but the feel the the cells that denote inside and outside are different. Another little gotcha you'll have to do is the names of the volumes, surface and V. Um, it's expecting collision and collision veil, as you can see here. So we're gonna actually have to change this to surface and V, which is easy enough to do. Alternatively, you could keep this collision collision veil and change the names uh, when you created the volumes over here. We could have just typed collision and collision veil here. 